Howdy folks, welcome to a structural analysis of the Pixar movie Up. Uh, having recently crawled out from under a rock and watched this film for the first time, of course I really enjoyed the storytelling, the animation, and didn't cry, uh, like at all, absolutely not. But as an engineer, I definitely had some thoughts about uh, what's going on here. So today we'll get into a few points that interest me from a mechanics perspective that go beyond the oft-attempted investigation of can balloons lift a house and think about how a house is lifted. But still, it's a good place to start, in case you haven't seen the exercise done before, to consider how the balloons raise the roof and put some figures to that. The math of it is pretty simple. The weight of the house needs to be less than the uplift created by the helium balloons. The weight of the house should be a pretty simple calculation, right? But in cursory research, I was pretty surprised to see the opinions can vary from under 100,000 pounds to over 500. And it didn't seem to be due to the lack of expertise that recommendations came in from foundation experts and people who specialize in moving old buildings. Now, a lot of the variation can be attributed to the assumptions made about the size of the house and what the materials are. If we think Carl has a 1,500 square foot home or a 3,000 square foot home, that would alter our assessment by about a factor of two. If we think he has a heavy roofing or siding material like slate or stone, that could add many thousands of pounds. Or assuming what kind of structural system that they may be using, like a concrete slab, though I'm reasonably confident Carl's house has a pier and beam foundation, or maybe pier on continuous footing, which entails a wood frame structure that should weigh on the order of magnitude about 15 pounds per square foot. I hedge that statement by saying order of magnitude because even that could vary by a decent factor. If the original designers opted for fewer, perhaps more expensive foundation elements, that would push the floor to span farther and therefore be heavier in the converse if they had uh, many points of support. But ultimately, I had a hard time calculating anything lower than 125,000 or higher than 275,000 pounds, and that may be the best we can do with estimating animated architecture, but fine. Feet held to the fire, let's conservatively call it 230,000 pounds, furniture and all. So that's one side of the equation, uh, how about the balloons? As we know, helium balloons rise in the atmosphere, and this is because helium at standard air pressure is about one-sixth as dense as air, with air as we know it being mostly nitrogen with a mix of oxygen and other trace gases. The uplift per balloon is going to be impacted by the balloon size, obviously, the, the string used to tie it down, uh, the balloon material itself, and technically, when Carl gets high enough, the uplift will be offset some amount by the reduced density of air at the lower atmospheric pressure. Now, so as not to traumatize you with a cursed Excel spreadsheet, I'll go ahead and jump to the part where I tell you, ooh, so many balloons were used. <laughs> Let's call it 6.35 million, anything more exact than that, and I'm just trying to impress you with a long string of numbers. Ooh, uh, fun times. <laughs> so with that out of the way, and now we know there was something like a 200,000 pound force lifting up Carl's lovely home through the strings that all tie down through a single point in the chimney. Now my first thought here is that because we're only supported at one point, this chimney, or at least where the strings anchor, would need to be located right at the center of gravity of the house in order for it not to naturally tilt. If the center of gravity were offset in either of the X or Y directions, if you will, the house would rotate about the point of support until those loads are aligned. Now, the tricky thing about supporting the house at the first floor then is that the support point is surely below the center of gravity, meaning the direction of rotation of the house might actually need to flip the house upside down to reach that equilibrium. And when we look at the up house from the exterior, the chimney appears to be nearly center justified in the left-right directions and seems centered back to front, but there is certainly more house on the right side, uh, more siding and at least 50% more roof. This indicates to me that we would end up unbalanced unless of course Carl had taken the precaution to balance out by pushing furniture to the opposite side of the house. <laughs> or maybe the base of the chimney isn't aligned with the top, and there's decent reason for making this guess. Despite not being shown a whole lot of the interior of the house, we are shown where specifically the chimney base is, and that's in this room here, clearly centered well to the right of the top of the chimney, and uh, maybe aligned with the center of mass. Uh, however, when pulling the strings tight, 
height with the load of the house and trying to straighten, the chimney walls would experience some large forces on their side walls which if the chimney base was really located at the house's center of mass, the force applied to the chimney walls would counteract the unbalanced loading in a way that would maintain an equilibrium, provided that the string in the walls can handle that force. And uh, boy does this resemble the principles of pre-stressed concrete, which I am itching to dive into for a video, but this is probably not the A1 example, so I'll leave you with that ever-enticing teaser for more engineering content for you to want more of. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, besides, I'm a little distracted by what the strings are anchored to. Uh, I think it's this uh, wood rack. I, I mean, this is the chimney, but that raises more questions than it answers. Uh, if that's the case, we need the entire weight of the house to hang from this wood rack with, what, uh, a couple of screws on each end? Uh, even still, if we make the assumption that Carl had one of those industrial strength embedded in the floor system type of wood racks, just go with me here, I think there's some meat on this bone, we'd end up with a case that the floor structure would need to support the weight of the whole house with a loading configuration something like this. And while at first glance you may say, well, doesn't the floor have to resist that load anyways? Well, kind of, but as we guessed at before, Carl appears to have a wood beam over a pier or footing foundation with beams that support floor loads and load-bearing walls that distribute loads from above to these foundation elements. The floor and beam system, as it turns out, uh, isn't that strong. The difference of having multiple supports spaced every 5 to 10 feet versus having a single support in the middle of the house would place demands up to 50 times higher on the floors, and even though many old structures were designed with higher factors of safety or higher assumed loads, they're certainly not that high. However, the floor and beam system wouldn't necessarily be the only load path for supporting the uphouse from a single point. In a similar way that the walls connect structurally through load bearing, depending on the construction methods, walls could act compositely with the floors to vastly increase the strength. But the engineering design for these goes well beyond what a typical building would require and without running numbers, I'm not even sure this could be done with conventional materials. Is this a load path I would want to rely on if I were to be signing and sealing this house? Uh, maybe, but I might want to change a lot about the structure. In my mind, the simplest solution would be to treat it uh, something like a hoisting platform, but that doesn't allow for easy adjustment to the balloon count like Carl does here without adding some roof access. I don't know, uh, how might you address the structural system for the uphouse? But that thought about using a hoisting platform, as one might see during construction, raises an interesting comparison for the uphouse to something quite common. And please be an adult with me for a minute. It's like steel erection. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, man, look, I, I don't make up the terms. Uh, civil engineering has been around since before people had senses of, of humor, I guess. But the parallel I'm trying to draw is that often when working with a structural system that's already been fabricated, there are multiple conditions that need to be accounted for if you need to pick it up. So like with steel, the designs are often so optimized that when being hoisted into place, it isn't being braced by the floor or deck like it would be in its final condition and is much more prone to buckling as a result. This concept also applies to tilt-up and precast construction. Maybe I should have led with that example, but for these cases, concrete members are hoisted into place from cast and anchorage points and can be subjected to significantly different loads and structural demands than they might experience in their permanent location and would need to be designed for that, in the same way that I hope Carl consulted with his local engineer prior to setting for the skies. Anyways, uh, thanks for hanging out and taking a ride with me for this fun little video talking about the hidden engineering principles behind the movie Up. If you have any thoughts on this video or any other videos you'd like to see, please drop a comment, and if you enjoyed it, uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks again, and adios.